Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Brock Hebner from NoCoSpias.com and welcome to episode 3 of the UFC Weekly Recap. Um, I'll go ahead and apologize for not having one up last week. I was running through a lot of technical difficulties with my camera and the microphone and all sorts of stuff. So I figured by the time I got it fixed, I might as well just uh, wait until this week. Uh, there wasn't a lot of stuff going on last week anyways. Um, so what we'll do this week is we'll quickly touch on some of the things that happened that I want to talk about last week, which is really only one thing. Talk about uh, Anderson Silva getting popped for uh, another test and uh, him, Nick Diaz, and Hector Lombard's suspension. Uh, we'll talk about about uh, the fight announced, the new fight announced for UFC 189 on July 11th. We'll talk about uh, the the press conference that the UFC uh, had today regarding uh, drug testing, and then we might go over uh, the fight card uh, that's happening this weekend between uh, Frank Mir and Bigfoot Silva. Um, but maybe it just depends on how long uh, we go with this, uh, with everything else. So. Uh, Let's get started. Uh, last week, uh, really the week before, or so I was going to talk about this last week. Uh, Hector Lombard uh, tested positive for steroids and uh, got pulled from his fight with Rory McDonald at UFC 186 in Montreal. Um, they uh, they wound up replacing that fight with uh, Demetrius Johnson defending his title against Kyoji Horiguchi for the flyweight uh, title. Um, that'll be a good fight. I think Horiguchi is a good fighter. I just don't think that he's really up to the task yet uh, to fight um, somebody like DJ. I don't think there are many guys that can hold up to DJ except for John Dodson. Um, it's kind of weird that they did make that fight, though, just because Horiguchi even has said that he doesn't want to fight for the title yet, that he does not think he's ready. So for the UFC to make that fight whenever the one of the fighters himself says he's not ready for it, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, but nevertheless, they, they took off a good fight and replaced it with a title fight. So um, if the people in Montreal are, are upset, you know, you're getting two title fights, so calm down. That's all that really seemed to happen last week, though. There wasn't really too much on Anderson Silva or Nick Diaz. Um, but this week, um, there was more that came out on Anderson Silva. He apparently had tested positive on fight night for more drugs. Not steroids, though. It was anxiety and insomniac medicine they tested positive for and failed that drug test. Um, the Nevada State Athletic Commission wound up suspending him temporarily, as well as Nick Diaz and Hector Lombard, who tested positive for steroids. Um, all three men are temporarily suspended, and all three are wait awaiting farther and more harsh, probably, disciplinary action that's going to take place at a later date. Um, you know, some people are freaking out over the Silva anxiety and insomnia uh, pills, you know, positive test. It's like, come on, like, really? There are dudes who test positive for an Adderall and stuff like that, like, just medicine. Uh, you know, it's, it, that's, that's medicine. You know, who knows what he was going through? I have a hard time seeing how anxiety pills and insomniac pills are going to help him win a fight compared to the steroids that he apparently was taking. Uh, so the timeline of events for Anderson Silva's test was January 9th, he uh, failed a test for drug, for steroids. Um, and then on January 19th, he passed a test, was not test, didn't test positive for anything, and then he failed another test on fight night on January 31st, but not for steroids. It was for anxiety and insomniac pills. Um, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't look good, just the fact that you test positive for something, but... You know, what a wild ride for this guy over the past month. It'll be interesting just to see kind of what really happens to him because he's still holding on to the whole he did not do anything, uh, didn't take steroids, didn't do anything. So um, we'll see what happens to him uh, when the NAC uh, comes down on him here in a month or so, probably at a future meeting. Um, like I said before, you, you know, they're probably going to suspend him big. They're probably going to suspend Nick Diaz even you know larger because he's, uh, failed and been an offender multiple times with this kind of stuff, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens here in a month or so whenever they have this next meeting. So, as I mentioned, uh, Hector Lombard and Rory McDonald's fight was called off um, because of Hector Lombard's uh, positive steroid test, and like I said, he was also suspended along with Nick Diaz and Anderson Silva. Um, the UFC today, though, at their big press conference, uh, did announce that Rory McDonald will be fighting Robbie Lawler for the welterweight title on July 11th at UFC 189 International Fight Week. 
Um, it will be the co-main event to Jose Aldo and Conor McGregor. A uh, quick thing on that, it's kind of weird because uh, they've said before that the only reason why um, certain title fights are above other title fights or why uh, a women's title fight is only the co-main event compared to the main event um, when there's an, another title fight on there for men. So the only reason is because of weight. Uh, the highest weight weight class gets the the higher um, you know, the higher fight on the card, basically. Um, but the welterweights weigh more than the featherweights, so why wouldn't the welterweights get put up in the main event? It's just them kind of contradicting themselves a little bit. But it's a better decision because, honestly, nobody wants to see Roy McDonald and Robbie Lawler fight again because Robbie Lawler dominated him the first time they fought, um, you know, I don't agree with the fight. Um, I've been saying that they should have had, uh, they, you know, they should have found another fight for Rory um, and let Johnny fight Matt Brown and then, then figure it out after that. Of course, I've also said that they should have always had it be Johnny Hendricks and Rory and the winner of that will face Robbie Lawler. Um, but, you know, whatever. Well, McDonald was promised to fight after he beat Tarek Safadine and then they gave it to... Uh, they were going to give it to Hendricks instead, and all this mess, it was it was kind of ridiculous. Um, but then they wound up making a fight with Rory and Hector, and then Hendricks and Brown, and then it was still going to be a mess, and I guess in some ways it's cleaned up a little bit because now they're just giving Rory that title fight. Um, like I said, I would have much rather seen him fight Hendricks to begin with. Uh, that would have set your number one contender officially, like two top guys, number one, number two, fighting each other, winner of that. There's no more contender, but whatever. You know, I've I've talked about this before, so if you want to see more of what I have to say about it, go over to nocosbias.com and check it out. Um, but yep, uh, July 11th, McDonald and Lawler two, one wasn't even worth it. Okay, so the UFC today held a press conference regarding uh, a lot of the, the positive drug tests they have in this new policy that they're implementing. Um, I'm going to read from my tablet here, um, Ariel Helwani's. Uh, coverage of it. I wasn't able to watch this. My, uh, for some reason I could just, the stream wasn't working for me. So I wasn't able to actually see it myself. Um, but we're going to, I'm going to read off, uh, the things that he was reporting on his Twitter account. And then we'll kind of go over some of the things that he said. He's saying that Lorenzo Fertitta uh, opened up, uh, basically saying that in competition testing is effective, but they need to recognize that the out of competition needs to be improved, that they can do better. Um, Dana White then came up and went through um, a lot of the details over the past couple of months, starting with John Jones's positive test for cocaine. Um, and then he was talking about how the UFC received Anderson Silva's pre-fight testing after UFC 183 and how uh, shocked he was that they didn't give a positive test for steroids before the fight. Um, so what he's saying is basically the UFC did not know anything about Anderson Silva's test until after the fight. Um, if this, that's, if that's true, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure it is true. I don't see why they'd lie about it. Um, you know, you'd like to think that if the UFC didn't know, they would have pulled the fight, but at the same time, they're in the business of like, of making money. So who knows? But as far as what they're saying, they had no idea about this positive test. So we'll go with that for now. Uh, Dana White also said that no fighter and no fight is worth the integrity of of this sport. Um, number one, you knew about John Jones's test before uh, that fight. So I think that's a bullshit statement that you just made because if no fight or fighter is worth the integrity of the sport, then why did you let Jones Cormier continue to go on when you knew about his positive cocaine test? Um, but nevertheless, maybe this is what he's saying going forward, so that would mean that Anderson Silva isn't even uh, exempt from that rule as he shouldn't be. Uh, they didn't announce that Roy McDonald and Robbie Lawler, like we just talked about. Um, Lindra, Lorenzo Fertitta uh, said that 19 fighters were tested out of competition, and five of them tested positive. I'm guessing over the past few months or the past few years, something like that. Um, in the UFC, so here's something big. Uh, the UFC will immediately advocate to every commission to test every fighter on a card on fight night. They'll pay for any extra cost if need be. This is good. Um, this is them basically saying that we're going to urge every single commission, whether it's in Las Vegas, who's already doing it, California, who's starting to do it as well, Texas, Brazil, and even over in Europe, 
any commission, they are going to work with them to try and test every single fighter um, on that card to make sure that they aren't taking any steroids, doing any drugs, anything like that. Uh, they also said that all main event and championship fighters will be subjected to enhanced out-of-competition testing effective on July 1st of this year. Why they can't be effective now, I guess just they got to figure out the logistics of it. Um, and the UFC will now do comprehensive out-of-competition random PED testing for all fighters effective on July 1st. Um, so basically, the difference between those two is they're going to test all main event and championship fights basically the day of the fight or a couple days before the fight during fight week they're going to be testing them for sure um, for PEDs um, but they're also going to be testing all fighters out of competition for this kind of stuff uh, basically what they're saying is out of competition in competition it doesn't matter you shouldn't be doing this stuff period uh, which I think is true if you're gonna be getting paid all that kind of money it shouldn't matter And the fighters, the fighters will be subjected to testing by an independent third party using the WADA testing standards. That is the big one. That's what we've been waiting for. I've talked about this a couple times, how they need to stop relying on these commissions because they can't make them do anything. They need to hire a third party company to come in and do everything. If they can do that, um, which looks like they're going to, um, that will be huge. According to Lorenzo, they've been working on this for some time. Um, something that's also pretty big that they said is that the UFC um, is saying they would support a four-year ban for first-time offenders. Um, you know, what's kind of funny is they, the UFC can implement these suspensions. People, I don't know if people know that, but suspensions don't have to be done by commissions. The UFC can do these things. So why haven't they been doing it to begin with? Like, you know, why haven't they gone off and banned and suspended guys um, harshly for testing positive for drugs and stuff like that? Why have, Why are they only relying on commissions to do this kind of stuff? These guys are fighting under your name. You should be able to do whatever you want with them. Uh, when asked if uh, why they aren't doing it themselves and they're hiring a third party, basically gave the obvious answer that they're in the sports media business, not in the drug testing business, so they need some actual professionals to come in there and do it. Um, basically what it looks like is Dana White just kind of went off on what he thought about PED usage and... Uh, in the sport, you know, he, he kind of took a, a swing at baseball, talking about, you know, we're not baseball, they're hitting a the ball, we're punching people in the face. He was saying that if you can't fight with your natural abilities and you don't belong here, all that being uh, very, very true. So the big thing to take away from uh, what had happened uh, this afternoon at that meeting is that the UFC is hiring a third-party company uh, to come in and test all fighters in and out of competition for all drugs, Marijuana, cocaine, um, you know, PEDs, anything that you know they can get their hands on, they're going to be tested for it. Um, they're going to be definitely going to be testing uh, championship fight fighters on the day of the fighter fight week, um, and they will be testing all fighters out of competition as well. Basically, to sum that all up, they're going to be testing anybody and everybody they can whenever they can do it. Um, they're going to definitely try their best to clean up the sport from what it sounds like, and that's a good thing. Um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that's going to keep fighters around. It's the kind of stuff that's going to bring guys like GSP back to the sport, possibly. Um, and this is what the sports needs. You know, they did say that it's going to get worse before it gets better, and of course, that's going to happen. You know, I'm assuming over the next three, four, five months, hell, maybe even the next, the rest of the year, we're going to find a lot of fighters that are testing positive uh, for steroids and other types of drugs and stuff like that. Um, but hopefully. By this time next year, it'll already be pointed in the right direction for getting cleaned up and, uh, and going about the right way. Um, you know, I do like it that Dana White said that, you know, no fighter or fight um, is going to cost them their integrity. But again, it's just kind of a, 
kind of odd that he would say that whenever he let the Jones and Cormier fight go on when they knew about that test a couple weeks before. Um, you know, they, they've tried saying that they didn't know until John Jones knew. Um, but Nevada came out and said that they gave UFC the results like a couple weeks before the fight even happened. Um, so the UFC knew, and they still let it go on. Now, they're kind of also saying that, well, you know, it's cocaine, so we're going to kind of just let it go. We, he needs help. Uh, whereas with steroids, it's a completely different story. Um, you know, for, for all we knew, John Jones said that, you know, it was a one-time thing. Uh, and whatever, you know, who knows if he's telling the truth or not, but it's just kind of odd to me that they are going to sit there and uh, tell you that we're going to be suspending guys, you know, and all sorts of stuff, and no fighter or fight is worth the integrity of the sport when they just let a guy get, get away with, you know, doing one of the worst drugs that you can possibly do under their name. So um, very odd, I guess, uh, very frustrating to kind of hear that as a guy who, for one, doesn't like John Jones to begin with and wants to see this stuff all be cleaned up. I don't care just about steroids. Um, marijuana, um, cocaine, all these other things, just need to stop doing it. Um, you know, I'm not against, you know, marijuana in general. I don't think it's bad. Um, but if you, just like with any other sport, if you're going to be under the name of a company, um, fighting under their name, playing in sport under their name, you should have to follow their rules. If one of the rules is you can't smoke pot, then just don't do it. Um, now, I, I know that guys like Nick Diaz have medical license to do it, um, but that should be recognized by the UFC and by Nevada that this guy is allowed to do this kind of stuff for medical reasons. Um, but just in general, you know, I understand if it's legal in some places. I understand that if you don't think it's bad, but if you are... You know, if you are making the kind of money that you're making, um, doing something that you love like that, you shouldn't be breaking the rules. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So I hope that the UFC does catch a lot of these guys doing doing illegal drugs and just takes care of it. Either gets them out of here, suspends them, just start sending messages over and over and over again. Um, they need to start with Anderson Silva. They really do. The the you know let Nevada do their thing, but the UFC needs to step in there and. So do something more than that. They need to finally take this by the reins themselves and make these suspensions because they're allowed to do that. It's it's in their contracts and stuff. They can do that. That's why you know guys in the MLB get suspended by the MLB or NHL or NBA or NFL. You know because that's the league that they're falling under. The UFC is like a fighting league. You know they the UFC should be able to suspend these guys. Um, I don't like that they're just kind of falling on the shoulders of what Nevada is doing. Um, you know, now hopefully with this third party company coming in here, they're going to start getting the commissions kind of out of the way. And with the third party doing their testing, then the UFC then can take hold of it themselves and make all these suspensions. I hope that's what ha what happens. I hope that they don't really just have to rely on uh, the commissions to do it because not every commission is going to do it. Uh, Nevada, we know, will do it. Uh, California has been said that they are testing Rousey and Zingano uh, for UFC 184. It's going to take place in a couple weeks. Um, and that they're doing it as well. And I'm sure other commissions will be more than happy to do it. Um, but it's the commissions like Brazil. Uh, Brazil's one of the worst about testing their guys uh, for any type of drugs or steroids or anything like that. Um, and all the commission has to do is just say, no, we're not going to do it. We're not going to spend that kind of money to do it. Now, the UFC did say that they will spend the extra money to make sure it gets done. So we'll see how true they stick to that. Um, but you know, I don't want to go on forever about this. Um, I'll start repeating myself over and over and over again. Um, but no, UFC is bringing in new testing. They're going to get this cleaned up, hopefully, and uh, hopefully they they make good on all the things they've been saying. Okay, so let's uh, before we uh, end this thing, we'll quickly go over um, the fight night that's happening uh, this uh, this weekend. Um, it's taking place on a rare Sunday for the UFC. It's going to be uh, in. Porto Alegre, Brazil. I probably butchered that name. Um, but it is going to get started at about uh, 4 o'clock central time here in the U.S. and uh, go on from 5 o'clock for the late prelims and 7 o'clock for the main card. Um, so let's go over some of these fights. I'll go through every single fight. And I'll give my thoughts on a couple of them probably, not all of them. Um, so we're getting things kicked off with Ivan George and Josh Shockley. I didn't realize that Josh Shockley was still in the UFC. Um, next is Douglas Silva de Andrade versus Cody Gibson. Um, 
Then we'll get Window Oliveira Marquez versus TJ Waldberger. There's a lot of Brazilians on this card. That's what they do when they go to Brazil. Uh, Tiago dos Santos y Silva versus Mike de la Torre. William Marquisio versus Matt Dwyer. Jessica Andrade versus Marianne Renault. Santiago, I'm not going to pronounce her last name, versus Sean Strickland. Uh, Yuri Alcantara versus Frankie Sainz. Uh, Rustam Habilov versus Adriano Martins. Uh, I like this fight. Um, I think that Habilov is going to run over him, to be honest. Um, Habilov, you know, his last fight against Benson Henderson uh, was rough for him, but I think he's going to bounce back, and I think he's going to run over uh, Martins. Uh, Cesar Ferreira versus Sam Alvey. Um, I'm picking Alvey in this one. Um, that dude looked awesome in his last fight, smiling Sam Alvey. So I'm pretty. Sure I'm going to pick him in this fight. Um, Edson Barboza and Michael Johnson as your co-main event. Um, Michael Johnson's a little tank, um, but Edson Barboza is a wild man. Um, I'm picking Barboza in this fight. I would love to see another head kick from him. The dude throws the wildest and craziest head kicks that you'll ever see. Um, he's got incredible kicks in general to the legs and the body. Um, he will mess you up. He is like the only guy ever to get two TKOs from just leg kicks. Not kicks to the head, not kicks to the body. He kicked a guy in the leg twice so many times that the dude fell down and could not stand back up so the ref had to call the fight. That's ridiculous. And then in our main event is Antonio Bigfoot's, Bigfoot Silva versus the returning Frank Mir. Um, I'm picking Bigfoot in this fight. I want Mir to win because I'm not a Bigfoot fan. But Mir's been gone for a while, it feels like. I don't know how long exactly it's been. I don't know if it's been a year or two or even more than that. But it feels like it's been forever. And even in his last couple fights, he just did not look like the Frank Mir that we're used to seeing. He's getting older. Um, his body, you know, he was in a terrible motorcycle accident a few years ago. And, I'm, you know, he's fully recovered from all that. But those kinds of things, they wear on your body forever, you know. Um, nothing in my mind is ever repaired completely. It's always going to be there and cause problems. Um, so his body in general is just getting old. Uh, Bigfoot's still going strong. Um, hopefully he, he's not taking steroids like he did against Mark Hunt. Um, but this should be a really good fight, but I think that Bigfoot's probably going to wind up knocking him out. Um, so, yeah, that fight's going to be, again, uh, it's fight night on Sunday, not Saturday. Um, and the main card gets underway about 7 o'clock. And from there down is your prelims and your fight press prelims and all that kind of stuff taking place in Brazil. Um, so uh, that's kind of it for this week. There's not a whole lot else going on. Um, next week we will talk about uh, this weekend's fights and kind of how some of those fights went down. Uh, we will also talk about the upcoming UFC 184 between Ronda Rousey and Kat Zingano. And of course, anything else that comes out from the UFC and all these drugs and all sorts of problems that they're having. Uh, so catch us next next week. Uh, check us out on nocoastbias.com. Follow me on Twitter at Brocktavius. If you have any questions for next week's show uh, about the drug testing, about fights that are coming up, anything at all, uh, just leave it down in the comments and I'll answer them next week. If you have any ideas for a name for this, anything that we think we should do differently, um, just leave them down in the comments and, uh, and we'll definitely see what we can do there. Um, but yeah, check us out on North Coast Bias again. Follow me on Twitter and uh, you guys have a great rest of y'all's day. Thank you. Thank you.